Good morning. I'm going to introduce to you a concept I call the point at the ball rule, similar to the base of the ball rule, don't get that mistaken. This is the point at the ball rule for net players. And the mystery often is, where does the net player go? What are they supposed to do? How do they move? And this concept really answers that question, and it's a starting point. There are many different ways to cover, and there's different formations that we can use. But in general, this is probably the best way to start. And it comes down to, and we'll use my little wand here, if you can point at the ball, that's the direction you should be moving, two or three steps. If you can point at the ball, you go in that direction. So if I'm the net player and the ball is in front of me, it's going towards my opponent. If I can point at it, let's say it's going a little bit wide, I need to move towards the ball and I'm gravitating wide. I'm not pointing at it and gravitating to the middle of the court. That's the wrong position. I might need to, after they strike the ball, gravitate towards the middle of the court to pick up maybe a ball that I can reach. But for the first movement, wherever I can point at the ball, that's the direction I go. So it will come kind of like this. Here it is. Let's say my partner hit the ball out wide. I need to go out wide. That's the first position that I'm going to cover. If my partner hits the ball down the middle, it's in front of me. I go that direction and I cover. What happens when the ball is behind me? Well, it's the same thing. I point at the ball and it tells me where to go. So here I am in that first scenario, the ball went wide, I move towards it, and the ball goes back this way. I don't just watch and stand here. If I can point at it when it's behind me, I gravitate back this way and I've got my hoppers set up as if they were another team, uh, a, a, an opponent. As I gravitate back this way, I set myself up looking at that person across from me at the net because if my partner, this area is mine. I need to be covering everything that's potentially in this area. So let's talk about that again. When the ball is behind me, I point at it, I gravitate that direction, and as I'm gravitating that direction, I'm looking at the player at the net, my opponent at the net, and any ball that my partner hits at him, I've got that middle covered. And if my partner goes quite a distance off the court, I've got to go quite a distance off, the, off with him. If I can point at it, that middle line doesn't say stop. I need to continue with him. So the net player doesn't have a boring job at all. A net player has a very busy job. As a matter of fact, it may even look like this if we're in a, into a point. So ball goes this way, I'm coming forward, I'm ready, ball goes back. I've got to move back with it. I can point at it. I'm looking at the net player. The ball goes over that player. I'm pointing at it, I'm ready. The ball goes back, I come this way. It goes back cross court, I'm back here. And maybe now I can move and attack that ball. Point at the ball concept is very important for that net player. And if you're just standing there, you're missing opportunities to put yourself in line with the option the ball has to come back. And you're not getting beaten by leaving holes open. Doubles is all about coverage. It's about you and your partner being in the right place to cover the ball. It's amazing how many players we see that don't look like strong tennis players, but somehow they're always in the right place and they're very difficult to play against. Now this also works for lobs. It tells me where to go if the ball goes over my head. And that's really something that needs to be cleared up because you often hear players on the court saying, switch, well, if the ball's going over my head to the back of the court and I switch, the point of the ball concept just has fallen apart at that point. I need to actually, as it's going over my head, point at the ball. I need to go that direction. 
But remember, any ball that goes over my head is my partner's ball. I need to start heading back that way and I switch in the back court. So this ball now becomes my partner's ball, but I'm in the back court slightly in front with my partner so that we're covering the entire court as we come back in. These balls more or less are defensive. So I need to be back on defense with my partner. There's a fine line. There may be a time where at a higher level that may change. But remember, this is the beginning concepts of the net player and how they move on the court. So uh, advanced players may be able to attack that ball even though it was a lob. So the distance and the decision of the net player, they may not be going back. They may be going slightly forward, back a little bit, but then forward quickly towards the ball wherever direction it's hit. But the basic concept for people starting out, if a ball is struck over my head, that lob, my partner is responsible for anything that goes over my head. But I need to point at that ball and head in that direction first and then peel away so my partner can hit it. And then I'm in a position in the back court to come forward with my partner on defense rather than separating ourselves too far and having big gaps in between. Separating ourselves meaning the ball went over my head, my partner's getting it, and I'm just gonna switch to the other side. There's a huge gap between us and we've left ourselves vulnerable. So one last second, point at the ball, it tells you where to go. Point at the ball, tells you where to go. Couple steps. And you can still be moving as your opponent is getting ready to hit. However, once your opponent is striking the ball, wherever you are, you've got to stop. And that's your starting point to react. If you're continuing to move as they're hitting, you might find yourself turning around really quick and picking up a ball. Now, there's one last little tidbit to this that I want to add. If you are the net player, you need to move to a ball on an angle towards the net. You don't want to move diagonal straight across. Meaning, if I'm at the net, I've lined up by pointing at the ball with my, my uh, opponent on the other side, and I'm going to attack his ball. If I can reach it and my and I continue, if I continued, I'd run into the net. That was a good line I should take. If I follow the ball and my opponent strikes across, and I would never run into the net at any point of that going across, that's my partner's ball. Leave that for my partner. All right, I know this was long and lengthy. There was no hitting, it was all instructional. The point at the ball concept, the point at the ball rule for net players tells you where to move towards the ball. If it's behind you, you move towards it in that direction, a few steps. If it's in front of you, you move towards it in that direction, a few steps. The net player has a big job. They're constantly moving. They're not standing in one place and looking and looking and looking. And when the ball is behind you, your partner is going for it and you go back that way, you need to be looking at the net player, your opponent net player. That tells you he can give you clues where the ball is going to be hit and, and anything that comes at him, you're responsible for if it's crossing the middle of the court, anything in your direction there. All right, give that a shot. See how that works. I know that was long and lengthy. It was more than I actually wanted to talk about. But if you have any questions, um, definitely comment, ask, uh, be glad to respond. And um, please subscribe if you enjoy these instructional videos. Um, I appreciate uh, you to hit that subscribe button for me. And um, I'll keep posting videos uh, as I can. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.